It's great. I love how we're really adopting the American culture. I went down to Westfield Mall today, and I walked in right to the mall, and I was getting completely lost. And I saw these dudes standing there, and they had their hats turned backwards, had their bomber jacket on. One dude had his jeans so low, he could take a shit without taking them off. You know what I mean? <laughs> I said, is that an ad for Calvin Klein or Sally's No More Gaps? <laughs> huh? The dude had his Calvins on there, and they're right there. And I was thinking, you've got to wear good undies, don't you? If you're going to wear your jeans really low around your bum crack, you've got to have really good undies, because the manufacturers like to write their brand right around your elastic in massive font. So you've got to have good undies like, you know, Calvin Klein. You can't walk around with something like Kmart, you know what I mean? <laughs> or even worse, if you're really homophobic, Target. <laughs> you've got you to be careful of that gear. And... Um, I walked over to the dudes, right, and they're all standing there, they're cool, and I was completely lost. It's a big mall, I didn't know where I was, right? So I walked up to the boys and I said to one of the boys, hey, uh, which side of the mall am I on, right? And he goes, west side. <laughs> and they're, uh, didn't know where I was, I thought I need the boys' help, right? So I said, if I'm on the west side and I need to go to the east side, and I know there's an escalator on the north side which takes me to the northeast side, should I take the escalator on the north side to the northeast side, because the flip side of my car it's on the south side. Should I walk from where I am now, staying on the inside to avoid the outside, because it's raining on the outside, to the south side, then drive from the south side, around the outside, from the south side to end up on the east side? He wasn't sure. Yeah, but I made great friends with the deaf guy nearby. Yeah. He'd come to save me because I'd spelt S-O-S. Oh, thanks deaf guy, thanks very much. I was like, yes. Because that's, uh, that's, that's what I've been doing lately, just going, yes. Because um, I've been following like, Anthony Robbins, you guys know Anthony Robbins, like motivational guru, that guy, right? A friend of mine, he gave me his entire 30-day, one-hour program. I listened to it 30 hours straight, right? Fell asleep, woke up in the morning at 7 a.m. going, I have unlimited power. I will unleash the giant within. I will set a new standard. Now I am the voice. I am a leader. I will step up, step up, step up. And I thought, I don't even have a job. So I went back to bed, woke up at lunchtime and watched Ellen. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this is what I do. I've worked, I've done comedy in uh, 12 different countries. It's awesome, right? And uh, sometimes you learn some really funny stuff when you're overseas. Like in Malaysia, right? This is true. It's legal for a man to divorce his wife using a text message. Imagine that. You get home from work and your wife's there. Didn't you give a message? She's like, nah, I'm with Telstra. Oh. <laughs> I see. I don't know if this happens to you guys, right? But have you guys ever had one of those bulk text messages from someone you haven't heard of in years just letting you know that they've had a baby? Right? It's always exactly the same. Sarah Jessica Jones was born this morning at 7.15 a.m. Weighing 9.0 pounds. Mother and baby are doing well. Right? <laughs> I don't have a kid, so I always reply exactly the same. I'm still here, weighing 76 kilograms, <laughs> and I'm doing well. Huh? I thought, maybe I need to make it more interesting, so next time I'm going to be like, I'm under a bull in Pampelona, the bull weighs 812 kilograms, the bull is doing well, my health is uncertain. <laughs> now, uh... I only just made it here on time to the, uh, to the theatre tonight. What happened was, uh, I've been borrowing my mate's 1980 Toyota Corolla, right? And uh, it's, it's going all right, but it just, you need to keep pumping the accelerator, otherwise it wants to stall, right? So you've got to just go vroom, 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 just to keep the thing going, which is all right, but except for the traffic lights, right? Because <laughs> every bugger thinks you want to race them. Right? So I'm at the lights going vroom, vroom, dude's next to me, come on, man, vroom, 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 vroom like this, right? And I got here, okay? My mate called me. He said, how'd you go with my car? I said, one first and four seconds. <laughs> that was good, yeah. I hate the dickheads who do it really competitively. Like, they think it's actually cool. Like, dudes at the traffic line go, vroom, 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 as if to say, like, who's got the biggest engine, right? So I just turn up my Japanese language learning CD as if to say, who's got the biggest brain, right? <laughs> anyway, the dude's like, I'll give you a five-second start. I said, what does he want? Skoshi wa kadimasu. Demo choza jadimasan which confused the fuck out of him and really impressed his Japanese girlfriend. Yeah, sweet. So I uh, managed to have time to have a wine out the front there and uh, 
stand next to one of those wine experts, you know, you know the, oh, I can taste the, uh, the oak that the wine was stored in. That's oak from 1952, July, <laughs> cut from an Indonesian rainforest by a Yamaha chainsaw <laughs> by a left-handed lumberjack named Gary. Right? Someone gave me a bottle of wine right, a few weeks ago and said, there you go, mate, but you've got to let it sit for a couple of years because she's not ready. Right? It's got to mature, right? A couple of years. I don't get that kind of time. So what I did, I took the bottle of wine, went and put it in front of my radio. Then I switched my radio from FM to ABC Talkback and it aged nine years overnight. <laughs> So, you guys are such a great crowd. We're pumped tonight. Last time I worked at the State Theatre, I picked up after the show. That was sensational. <laughs> oh, thanks very much. Yeah, yeah. Woo! So, um, we might do the same thing again tonight. That'd be good. Hopefully not the same chick. That'd be weird. Um, that'd be really weird. It was uh, down the road at the Ivy, at that club. I went down there, right? And there she was, this girl. And uh, she's like dancing like this, you know, whatever she's doing. I, I don't know. Working the body. And uh, I went over to her, right? it's hard to think of the right thing to say to the chick the first time, you, you don't know her, right? And I walked over and she had a midriff top and a little stud and a belly button. I'm like, that's it, that's what I'll say, I'll talk about that. And I went over and I said, oh, I really like the stud you've got there in your belly button. And she goes, well, it's actually a real diamond and when the light hits it, it glitters like a star. <laughs> right? So I'd had a few drinks, right? So I said, well, I've read the Bible and I know that the star hangs above the location where all wise men should go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I ring up two mates. <laughs> Apparently there was no room at the end, but... <laughs> 